Welcome once again to International Speedway here at Saddlebow Road, Kings Lynn. For the third year running, the Norfolk track has been awarded a round of the prestigious World Team Championship. And today's meeting, the first step on the long haul to the final at the White City in August, is the UK qualifying round, but it's an absolutely vital meeting for two of the world's top speedway nations, England and the United States. England team champions in 1980, the United States really always pretenders to that title, but today, with just two to go through, they must both overcome the very stiff challenge presented by Australia and New Zealand. So let's take a look at the team lineup, starting with England. And Dave Jessup, once of Kings Lynn, now with Wimbledon, obviously a man with vast experience of the Saddlebow Road track. Kenny Carter of Halifax, surely a world champion of the future. Peter Collins, a great world champion of the past, comes into the side after a late injury to Chris Morton. And Michael Lee, the local favourite, world champion in 1980, reigning world long track champion, now coming back into his very best form. United States, led by reigning world individual and pairs champion Bruce Pennell, really perhaps the most exciting personality that the sport has produced in recent years. Dennis Segalos of Ipswich always goes well here, and then the Moran brothers, Kelly of Eastbourne, a year older than Sean from Sheffield. Australia, led by Billy Sanders, formerly of Ipswich, now of Kings Lynn, then Phil Crump of Swindon, John Tipman of Hackney, and Gary Gulyimi of Coventry. A late change for New Zealand, Larry Ross is injured, so Wayne Brown of Sheffield comes in, but so much will revolve around Ivan Major, six times world champion, now sadly rarely seen on British tracks. So it's England, the United States, Australia and New Zealand, the UK qualifying round of the World Team Championship. Let's join the action and Dave Lanning. Spearheading the England attack almost certainly will be Kenny Carter, this 21-year-old from Halifax who has been their most outstandingly consistent rider of the 1982 season. This is his 17th appearance in international colours has been the mainstay of the England side in the current test series against the Americans. Australia will be looking to the flair and style and indeed local track knowledge of Billy Sanders, of course such a familiar figure here in East Anglian Speedway for 10 years with Ipswich and after a season at Hull last year he's back in Anglia with Kings Lynn so he certainly knows his way around the Saddlebow Road track and he's been in pretty good form here too in the last couple of weeks with two maximum scores. And this is the lineup for heat number one on the inside, the veteran six times world champion Ivan Major. He'll be in the white helmet colour, as will all the New Zealanders in the programme. Major on the inside. Next to him in blue, Australia's Billy Sanders. He'll be in grid two. Grid three will have Kelly Moran from the United States of America. And on the outside, the mercurial Kenny Carter from Halifax Dukes and England. So here we go, Heat 1, Major on the inside, next to him Sanders, grid 3 has Kelly Moran, on the outside it's Kenny Carter in yellow and black for England. Heat number 1 of the 1982 UK World Team Cup Final. Beautiful conditions, the sun shining and away they go, and Carter it is from the outside, charging across and Major has got away from the inside as well, and it's getting pretty tight in there as Sanders and Major locked together, and Carter made a little bit of a hash of that corner, he's back in last place as Moran comes through, and Major has gone from first to last in one lap. was a torrid first lap and now the battle is thoroughly on between Sanders and Kelly Moran with Carter who got squeezed out on the first corner back in third place for England and Moran with a real little tiger has pushed Sanders way out of his path and he's moved up front now Sanders in second place and uh, Carter now closing on the Australian Remember, it's 340 metres around Kings Lynn, and it looks like it's going to be a lively start from the Americans. Moran's going to win it, second place. Will be Sanders, two points for him, one only for Carter. So that's a promising start for the Americans. And Kelly Moran had to do it the hard way, worked his way through from the back, but he's opened the American account in fine style. The first quarter of Heat one again in replay, and as you can see, they all bunch up, and it's Major on the inside who gets clear. Following through on the inside too comes Sanders, with Carter getting squeezed out there on the second corner. Now Sanders comes through, and watch for Moran, and Moran really makes his move through on the inside of first Carter, then hard under Ivan Major, and he moves up into second place, and after that, 
He sets his sights on Sanders up front. And it really was some fine action from the American around the first lap there. Two races gone, and as rather anticipated, the battle developing between America and England at the top, as you can see, with Australia still very much in contention, and New Zealand, who we rather feared would be out of touch, as they have two of their riders, Ivan Major and Mitch Shearer, currently unattached with no score yet. Moving into heat three, and we'll have a look at the lineup. It is an interesting one with two late replacements on the inside, Dennis Segalos from the United States of America. Next to him, Wayne Brown, who comes in for injured uh, fellow countryman Larry Ross. He's in the white helmet colour grid 2 grid 3. Has uh, hard-riding Australian Gary Bouvimin on the outside. Peter Collins England coming in for Chris Morton. His injured teammate from Bellevue. And as they hit the corner, it is Collins who roars across the field. Collins in front. Second place to battle on between Sigalos and uh, Brown. And Sigalos just moving through on the inside there. But this is some international comeback for Peter Collins. PC, of course, 1976 world champion, missed last year with an arm injury, just back in the England side, and it looks like he means to anchor that place. He leads it, second place is Cigars, moving into third place is Gary Gulliemi for Australia, but they really are spacing out here. And Peter Collins, who only overnight has had the call to come back into the England squad, is really showing all his old style, all the old fare, all the old dash indeed. As we move into the last lap here of P3, and uh, well, it's good to see Peter Collins really back on form and in front for England. Over the line, three points for Collins in England. Zagarnas was second, Gulliwi was third. Three heats completed, America and England locked together on seven points apiece. Australia still in touch on four, New Zealand still to score. Heat number four is according to your programme. Peter, many congratulations, a, a sensational and international return. The two yeah, I'm very happy with that first race, but I mean, I've got another three rides to go. And I just hope I can put it together for the other three. And a new track record, were you particularly wound up for this one? I didn't realise I was going so fast, but uh, very, very happy, yeah, but... Uh, I've just got to do well in the other ones, that's the main thing. Heat 6 brings Peter Collins back into contention. Peter Spencer Collins, the eldest of five racing brothers, no less, from Lim in Cheshire. The eldest, of course, and uh, the only one as yet who has managed to annex the world individual crown. His career since then has had its ups and downs. Certainly seems to be on the upswing now again after a season-long layoff with an arm injury. On the left-hand side, Collins will be obviously carrying that arm a little bit. Let's have a look at the lineup. You can see Sean Moran on the inside, David Barge from New Zealand Grid 2, Collins Grid 3, Sanders on the outside. And again, it looks like Collins and Moran, and it's a rare battle going on up front, and Collins has got around the outside, and Moran almost pulls a wheel. He did well to control that one. But Collins is really back at his best, although Moran too saw an opening there and shot through, but Collins hasn't finished battling, he's on the outside, Moran's on the inside and we have got a race on now. So it's still Moran and still Collins trying to find some drive around the outside, first the outside, tried to swing back inside, now he'll go out again, and again he's trying to drive and has he got enough power? Very, very close, Moran still just has to drop on him, they're on the last lap, and this is a fine piece of speedway from Peter Collins, Collins almost squeezed by, but Moran suddenly found an extra gear from somewhere, and this really is a fine two-man battle between the two leading nations, they go over the line, and it was just Moran, Moran by about half a wheel up on Collins, third place was Sanders, and what a fabulous race between two real tenacious performers. On that uh, ultra-exciting last lap again, let's just look at it. You can see Collins on the outside, Moran on the inside, and Peter Collins just seemed for a moment here that he might find the drive and the power and the commitment to get around the outside. Really kept it all screwed on. You just see overcook the corner slightly. It allowed Moran to get clear. Moran just spurted into the lead, ran to the last two corners, and Collins produced another party piece here. Look at him going around the outside. And somehow he managed to wrench this bike round. He's going almost sideways on. 
and trying to fool Moran in front. He now swings back inside and really ran out of time and ran out of track because he almost gets up now. As you see, they make a dash for the line. It's Collins gaining all the time. The line comes up for Moran just about here, and it's half a wheel in front, and that's enough to keep America in front. There is the score. America now 15, England on 14 points, and really it's all about those two nations at the moment. Well, who said that... Uh Speedway wasn't the family sport. Oh, look out, Deirdre. Here come those nasty big motorbikes again. Advancing to Heat 8, USA and England squared up on 17 points apiece. Australia and New Zealand really out of touch now as we move in to Heat 8. And uh, it may well be a bundle of dynamite because we have in contention Bruce Pennell, the world individual champion, Kenny Carter for England, and they've had one or two little brushes, these two. We remember in the Intercontinental Final of the World Individual Championship last year, they tangled, and only last week they had another uh, little argy-bargy about tyres in the fourth test match at Bellevue. And Carter has been quoted as saying, I never seem to be able to run in or meet Bruce Pennell without there being a little bit of needle. So let's watch Heat 8. On the inside, Shearer next to him, Carter panels in grid three. Gulimi is on the outside, and Panel has got a flyer. Panel is away, and so too on the inside is Shearer, but Panel it is who stretches away. Carter's back in third place, and Carter is strangely subdued, although he comes through there. He must have heard me. Carter really made his move into second place, and now he must chase after Bruce Panel. And when the world champion gets in front, he doesn't normally make mistakes, and he isn't very often caught either. He's in front, Carter's now second, third is Shearer. Oh, I know Kenny Carter would love to get up and challenge this is lap three. It does seem to be closing the gap. And the panel is aware that he's there and stretches down this back straight around the Saddlebow Road circuit. As always, beautifully prepared by Cyril Payne and his team. They're into the last lap and Carter has again moved up and Carter's trying the inside run on the grass there. That uh, might be worth having a look at because it looked like Kenny Carter went across the inside line as they go into the bottom corner and Carter throwing everything in. Panel holding on as they come over the line. It's going to be a close call and it's just Panel. Carter was second, third, there was Shearer and uh, that last lap may well look and may be worth re-scrutiny because it looked as though Kenny Carter roared across the white line as they went into this pit corner and that does keep America and put them back in front just one point in it 20 the USA England on 19 points Australia and New Zealand well a sad story for the Anzacs Bruce Pennell America back in front with that uh, spectacular win of yours over Kenny Carter but you got a bit of satisfaction from that yeah, it was a close uh, race. I had a pretty good start on Kenny, and uh, I had a pretty good lead to begin with, but he caught me right back up really quick, which I knew he would be. And, uh, you know, it was uh, down to the last corner, coming out of the last lap, and I just happened to probably beat him by, I'd say, about half a wheel or so. But I know Kenny's always on you. Well, before that last corner, Kenny was right up inside you, almost on what well, he was on the grass, wasn't he, coming in to that last lap? I think Kenny probably uh, thought I was going to drop it down on him a little bit uh, too much there, and that's why I took a part of the infield with him but it was fair doings on his part he uh we just had a nice race down that back straightaway and i think i was just in the grip a little bit more than he was and got a better drive to that next corner well with us also dave jessup of england dave exactly how close is the rivalry between these two teams it's obviously very close on the track you know we, we do get on off the track i mean this is purely racing rivalry and uh, as you can see that the competition's as keen as ever and i think it's dead level at the moment all right a little bit two horse race at the moment between england and america but super second half to come i'm sure it's not just about qualifying is it you really want to go out and win this one we come here we must qualify that that we, we obviously got that in our minds but when you're racing americans on a sunday afternoon with the sun shining <laughs> you know we could do it winning there's no two ways about that well also on wednesday night we've got the deciding uh, test this really sets things up for that doesn't it yeah i think so everybody's in for a great match down in pool uh myself i've got quite a hectic schedule and i'm just gonna make it if all my connections are right then i'll be there on time i've got to have a helicopter uh, fly me in because i'll be in germany the day before practicing but uh it looks to be like a, a great final a great ending to a good test match and the winners tonight dave uh, a great morale boost for that oh the winners of the day would uh, would definitely be a morale booster but uh you know, the tables can be turned whatever way. I mean, we're, we're standing in now. We don't know the result of today's match yet. Right, we've got a great second half to come. Looking forward to that. Thanks very much. Thank you. 
If you really want a smart car, take it to Smarts. Exhaust fitted free while you wait at Smarts. New at Smarts, sun tuning by the experts. Low price leading make tyres for all sorts of cars at Smarts, of course. Accessories, spares and body parts all at Smarts Auto Parts, Alsham Road, Norwich. Son, you're a father yourself now, so you see life from an entirely new angle. But you don't have to stop thinking bigger, because the Angler have always encouraged you to save bigger. The Angler is one of the top six building societies now. Helping people think bigger makes them save bigger in an Anglia savings account. So I know what I'm giving my new grandson for his birthday. Think bigger with Anglia. Lunchtime, Nan? Aye. Knows how to make a salad, she does. Aye. Crisp lettuce, firm tomatoes, crunchy cucumber. Aye. And hine salad cream. Oh, aye. Well, I'll be. Tis even smoother than hines. No. And and tastes even better. It can't. It, it does. But what is it? Can you see? Why don't she turn it round? I wonder if Heinz know about this. New recipe Heinz salad cream. Who else could improve on Heinz? In 1945, when the Tories came to power in our town hall, the door was painted blue. Along came Labour, and it was painted red. Followed by the Tories, then Labour, surprise independence, Tory, Liberal, Labour, Tory, then, at long last, new peel-off Ron strip. Mix with water, spread it on, leave for a few hours, simply peel off, and wood is back to its natural beauty. New peel-off Ron strip removes 10 coats of paint and 37 years of politics in one go. Welcome back to sunny Saddlebow Road in this UK final of the World Team Championship. England and the United States really neck and neck as we go into the second half and rejoin Dave Lanning. Coming into heat nine, the Americans on 20 points, England back just one on 19. And we have two of the unbeaten individual riders in competition here in heat nine. There's Kelly Moran just going through his usual idiosyncrasies up to the start line, just knocking his front wheel against the uh, safety fence digging down to find some extra drive. He's going to be in grid two here, and he's got Dave Jessup, who is unbeaten for England on the outside. We have a very, very late reserve change. It's Baker on the inside. Next to him, Moran. Grid three, we have in white, David Barge, and on the outside, Dave Jessup. So the Australians trying to find some extra trump card, they're way back on only six points. So you need a miracle to get back into contention. Let's have a look at Heat 9. We must watch for Moran and for Jessup. Here they go, and Jessup's got a gay away again. A tremendous start from the little English, but he roars across the field. Moran's in second place, in third place with his barge. And now can Kelly Moran get up on Jessup? Two little men, but we're going to have a mighty tall battle. And it was getting a little bit hectic in there for third and fourth, too, with Baker making his move up on Barge. So we've got a battle up front, and we've got a battle for the third and odd point. And here's the first battle, and there's the second one. And uh, we have to look in two places at once. <laughs> Certainly Morant's making his effort up front, he'll try the outside and the inside, he can really find drive and grip and extra power from any direction Morant, and he's going around the outside of Jessup, and Jessup has contained him there into the last lap, now Bard seems to be up for the third place point, and again Morant will try to swing back down the inside of Jessup, and I think he might just have the drop on him, into the corner together, They're absolutely shoulder to shoulder, and once again, Moran has shown his bravery, his courage, and his commitment, and he has won Heat 9 
from Jessup, third place just hanging on in there. It was Dave Barge, but there's no stopping little Kelly Moran this afternoon. That really was some piece of passing on the last lap. You won't see a better last lap of Speedway than this one. Dave Jessup on the inside seems to have eliminated one avenue of attack from Kelly Moran. They just watched Moran swinging outside and it looked like Jessup all the way, but Moran hadn't finished. He switched back down the inside and as they go hurtling up into the last two corners, they're absolutely shoulder to shoulder, wheel to wheel. Remember they're doing something like 65, 70 mile an hour and Moran has just got the drop. And just look at this for a picture, both going sideways on, absolutely in synchronisation, fabulous stuff, a great picture. Moran just gets his wheels in front, another masterful piece of overtaking. And that prodigious piece of passing from Kelly Moran has pushed the Americans two points in front. They're on 23, England on 21, Australia New Zealand sadly out of sight. Heat 10 and the other half of the Moran brothers, Sean Moran, and it looks like another change for the New Zealanders this time. It's Bruce Cribb coming into the white helmet colour. So the revised lineup on the inside is Kenny Carter for England. Next to him we have John Tittman, grid three has Bruce Cribb on the outside. It's Sean Moran and Carter's got away and so too has Sean Moran. Uh, who is going to have the most power around the corner? And it was Carter who was in trouble and uh, he really knocked Sean Moran off there. And the referee has stopped it. Not happy with that one, some dramatic action. Look at it again. And Carter on the inside and Moran on the outside. It was all about these two. And as they get to the corner, it's Carter in front. But the little Yorkshireman hit some drive just around about here. There he goes. He managed to hold on, but uh, really there was nowhere but down for Sean Moran to go. Sean Moran coming up for the restart of Heat 10. Word from the pits is he took a painful knock on the knee, which he'll be carrying as he moves in to the restart of Heat 10. America, we remind you, just two points in front of England. It's always a danger to discount anything in speedway, but really the Australians on six and New Zealand on four really surely are going to have no more than an academic say in the UK Championship of the World Team Cup surely from now on in. Here is Carter who did well to hang on in that first corner incident, but uh, may be considered a little lucky to be allowed back in the restart. Carter on the inside, Tipman grid two, Bruce Cribb, the New Zealand reserve in grid three, Moran on the outside for the Americans. Oh, Carter, again, was a bit lucky there not to break the tapes. And away they go this time, and again it is Carter from the inside and Moran from the outside. So now, almost an I identical replay, Carter goes clear up the back straight, Sean Moran coming bursting trying to bore a hole right through him, Carter is aware of him and has contained him third place it's Crib, but the battle really on, up front as Carter, he's the one in yellow and black helmet remember and Sean Moran Moran to be sure will not stop dabbling and dicing just a battle end separating them and again it's Moran trying to find something down the inside and Carter just seems to have his measure at this time they're into the last lap just another 400 rather 340 meters to go and Carter is hanging on it looks like he's set for his first race win of the afternoon I wonder just how much that knock on the knee has taken out of Sean Moran just a little bit of the drive gone over the line, it's Carter for England. Second, Sean Moran. Third, in blue, just getting up there, was uh, John Tipman for Australia. Well, with me, the uh, older of the two flying Moran brothers, Kelly Moran. You've just come from uh, Sean in the pits. How is he? Oh, he's all right. He just seemed to twist at his knee a bit there, laying a bite down for Kenny Carter, but I think he'll be all right for the rest of the meeting. How did you see that, uh, that first lap incident? Uh, Kenny was on the inside trying to um, go for it, as we say. My brother was on the outside. Kenny caught a bit of a grip and lifted up, and my brother, taking a safety precaution, laid the bike down to pre prevent a further accident, whereas in turn, he sort of twisted his knee a bit. A restart with all four, did you agree with that? Oh, yes, um, quite fully, you know, because I think if my brother wouldn't have excluded, not just because he's my brother, but everyone else saw it that way, it'd only been right if he would have been reinstated back in the race, because there's no way he should have been excluded, because when a rider does take a precaution of laying his bike down for safety, he's always allowed back in the race. So I thought it was a fair call, quite honest. P12. Ivan Major, the New Zealander, a legend really in his own career, six times world speedway champion, three times world long track champion, 
unattached this year, just back after a very bad ankle injury in the World Long Track Final. Not with the British club, and that really has told for the galloping major. And two other world champions in heat 12. Peter Collins on the inside, Bruce Pennell on the outside. Bill Crump is the Australian in blue in grid two. And this time they get clear, and it's Crump who gets away. And we look for Pennell to come around the outside. Pennell trying to find the drivers. Crump leads it. Here comes Pennell down the boards. He's got around. Really brave, bold piece of cornering from Pennell. And we look for Collins, and Collins is trying to follow in his tyre prints. Pennell and Crump together, and Collins has come up into the picture now, and he's going to move around the outside of Crump here, if he can just find the horsepower, and he cannot. This is a spirited piece of riding from Crump, although he can't contain Collins, who switches inside. And it's Vincent Peter Collins at the moment, although Crump's moved back, and they're switching positions almost on every corner now. Again, it is Pennell in front, Crump still holding back Peter Collins, this could be a vital point for England at this stage, remember, is level with the Americans. And Bill Crump, world number three, when Collins won the title in 1976, is dealing the lines, what uh, might be a telling blow, and he might just get up on Pennell if the world champion is sleeping. Over the line they come, it's going to be Pennell wins it. Crump is second, Collins is third for England. And that could be telling, that might just be a crucial slip. Pennell has won it, was very close throughout Heat 12, but it has made a big difference to the scores at the top. John Berry, one half of the England management team of Berry and Eric Bucock, looking a trifle pensive as Michael Lee prepares for the action in Heat 13. Just four races left in this always absorbing uh, UK final of the World Team Cup. Uh, England were triumphant here in 1980. We do remember that uh, meeting when they finished uh, 11 points in front of the Americans. But last year at Reading, it was just four points again, England on 36. America on 32. So the state siders really looking to redress the books a little bit here in the sunshine of Saddlebow Road. They're two in front. They just really need to hold on and anchor it now. They've got Sean Moran despite that uh, knock on the knee. He'll be in grid three. There is the lineup. Michael Lee, of course, carrying England's hopes. And uh, Mike the Bike has had a fairly good afternoon. He's only been beaten once, has eight points so far. And he's on the pole position inside here on the grid at Kings Lynn. He'll be in the yellow and black helmet colour. Next to him in blue for Australia is Gary Gulhimi from Coventry Bees. He's got just one point so far, not the best of days for him. Sean Moran is in red, he's in grid three. And Ivan Major, the old fox, who uh, really is just finding the pace a little too hot for him this afternoon. He's on the outside of white for New Zealand. So here we go again in heat 13. has beautifully anticipated the start, he's got clear, second place is Moran, third is Major, and Major's making a dash here, but now it is Lee and Moran, Moran will surely try to attack down the inside, swinging around, Lee is on the outside, Moran on the inside as they peel down under our commentary position, and it's Michael Lee, now can Moran find a little bit of extra, we know he can move inside, we know he can drive outside, and we know that Michael Lee knows every inch of this Saddlebow Road circuit, and we really have another race for the Connoisseur and Moran again has found some drives down the inside and they're absolutely neck and neck and Lee is battling away there and he's withheld that challenge and that really took some courage and it kept an awful lot of motor on Lee really doing so well for England with Moran really on his tail pushing inside outside always trying to ride over him Mount Major still in third place but it's still the battle up front and who's it going to be around the last two corners Lee in front can Moran find one last effort? No, he cannot. And Lee has won what could be a crucial race for England. Second was Sean Moran. Third was Ivan Major. It keeps it very, very close. Three races left, just one point in it. America 32, England 31, and it looks like another fabulous climax between the Americans and the Lions. Michael Lee, a really crucial win that for England, but uh, you couldn't afford to go to sleep in that uh, in that heat. No, I could hear Sean's motor buzzing, sort of, he was underneath me most of the race, and I just kept on my toes, and I knew the, the best line. I was in front, and I took it, and I think I just edged home in front of him. And the real pressure seemed to come in that third lap, which, which we can see now. Yeah, well, Sean, you can see, he's coming hard under me there. I knew the dirt was on the outside, so I just kept out there, just got the back wheel in the dirt, and I knew I could pull him out the corner. 
and then it was a race down to the next bend and uh, well obviously I just made it. See, it's getting a bit hectic going in there. But, it's, re uh, it's really been uh, pressuring all the way through this meeting, Sean, hasn't it? Oh yeah, he's, he's really come on form this year and uh, you know he's, he's pulling the goods out for the Yanks today and you know we've just got to go out and finish these last two races off now and stand a good chance on winning, I think. And America have uh, their trump card in heat 14 as the pressure begins to build up. It's Kelly Moran unbeaten, nine points from three starts. Next to him, we have Peter Collins for England, who uh, started brightly, has rather uh, dropped off a little. He's got a win, a second and a third. And they're very, very close together on the grid there. In uh, the white helmet in grid three, it's Mitch Shearer. John Tippmann on the outside, but we'll look at the two riders on the inside. Collins in patience. Again, Collins trying to jump the start unsuccessfully and away this time, but Moran has got the drop on him. Moran is away in front. Collins is second, although he might have to do something about Mitch Shearer and almost ran him out through the boards there, but it's Moran in front now. Can Collins do something that all his England teammates have been unable to do? And that's uh, catch Kelly Moran. Once again, it won't be for the want of trying from PC. Moran seems to be aware of him swinging out. It seems to know that uh, Peter Collins likes to come around the outside, and so Collins switches inside. Again, we have a race for the purists here with Moran just seeming to want to do enough rather than get his head down and go, and Collins, who will battle with all his North Country tenacity to try and pull England back here into the last lap of Kingsley in third place, a long way back is Mitch Shearer. That really is strictly for the record books as Peter Collins makes one last bold, brave effort around the outside now. Will he try and swing back or will he keep it around the outside? He drives the outside line, it's just not enough. Moran wins it to complete an unbeaten afternoon, unquestionably the individual star, Kelly Moran, he wins it. Second place was Collins. My word, didn't he have a go though? The Americans have edged a further point in front. They're now on 35, England are on 33, and they now only have two races to do something about that gap at the top. Well, there was uh, Kelly Moran getting the traditional victory salute from his teammates. They looked delighted. And uh, it certainly has been a memorable maximum for little Kelly. Well, heat 15, and England look to Kenny Carter who's improved as the afternoon has unfolded. His opponent from America is Dennis Segalos. He'll be in grid two. We must also watch for Phil Crump because he could be a spoiler on the outside in blue from Australia. And David Barge from New Zealand has two third places. And uh, you can see the tension there and away now. Again, Crump is impatient. You can almost smell the tension. And away they go this time. And it is Carter who breaks. And so too has Segalos. And Crump's in third place. And Carter is away. Segalos is second, Crump is third at the back of his barge. And they're all leveling up and Sigalos noses and edges and tries to find a hole. He's left one for Crump down the inside and he's getting awfully tight and Phil Crump has moved up into second place and Sigalos has a rare battle and he's managed to squeeze back in around the outside as this UK final really does come to the boil. Sigalos in second place, Crump by no means out of the picture in third place. This is lap three. If we stay like this, it will drag England back to within a point of America, which means we'll go into a last race decider for the UK crown again. Crump noses up and again. Sigalos makes a last effort. These are the last two corners. Carter's just got to hold on. Do anything silly now, Kenny. Looking over both shoulders, he's okay. He's over the line. Three points for him and for England. Two for Sigalos. One for Crump. And that uh, really does set the scene for what should be a really enjoyable and memorable last heat. Yes, there is the score. As you can see, it is really very tight at the top. And the all important start. And it could be the one crucial factor about that start is that panel is on the inside in red next to him is Jessup in grid two but he's Sanders from Australia is in grid three Wayne Brown on the outside I really think we might afford the luxury of disregarding them and just watch what panel and Jessup reckon to be the top two in the world last year remember Jessup must win it if England are in for the chance and Jessup has just about got the start Jessup is away, so too is Pamela, and it got very, very torrid onto that first corner. 
It's Jessup in front, in third place it is Brian. But now we really have a battle on because Bruce Pennell won't like that. He really got squeezed out on the first corner and Jessup is looking for him. He knows he's in second place and DJ must get his head down and go for his life. And now Pennell switching inside. And we know what a brilliant rider from the back Bruce Pennell can be. This is lap three, terribly tight. About a length between the pair of them. Which way will Pennell go? Inside or outside? Jessup does just seem to have an extra little jot of power. It could be so telling. Again, Pennell trying it into the last lap. And Jessup has ridden an immaculate line. Really laid it back there. I think he's trying to con Jessup. They have to move now. They're down the back straight for the last time. And here comes Pedal again around the outside. He's making his big drive now. And uh, Jessup is aware of it and wins it. Wins it looking back. The crowd leap to their feet. Jessup wins. Pedal is second, third. Just in case anybody was watching was Wayne Bryan. The crowd are loving that. That means we end all square. And it still isn't all over. Well, there are the final scores after the 16 uh, program heats. America and England squared up at 39 apiece. No doubt at all about the qualifiers. There is Dave Jessup who rode a captain's race to make sure that we go to a man-for-man -man runoff for the UK crown. And it is going to be fascinating to see who England uh, pull in for that runoff. If you think I'll, I'll match yeah, you, if you think so, I'll be you know. Yeah, it's you then. Yeah. Yeah. You, right. you got an edge on? Good, yeah, I think we're uh, You got an edge on, have you? Uh, Peter, it's quite a return. How do you, how do you accept that uh, decision for the ride-off? Uh, looking forward to it. I just hope I can get out there and do it, but uh, it's going to be difficult, but try and get myself going and get it won. Kelly, you were really the obvious uh, man for the ride-off. How are you looking forward to the ride against Peter Collins? Oh, pretty good. It just depends on what side of the coin I'll get, you know. If I get a good choice, I'll probably take the outside. But with Peter, you know, you always have to worry at Peter just coming a bit further around you on the boards, you know. The toss really is that important, is it? Yes, it does. It's all a matter of getting out of the gate, then you have half the race done, you know? But if it goes the other way, then you've got to start all over again. It's fall on the floor, Josh. I don't care. care. Oh, yeah. Are you on care. the floor, it's going. Heads. Heads. Heads is. Heads is. <laughs> <laughs> Best of luck, Kelly. I'll, I'll take the outside. Four. Oh, yeah. Good line. <laughs> the crowd settles in expectancy as the two contestants for the runoff, England and America, come to the line we've never ever had such a tight finish in a world cup event all the riders you can see of various teams some of them can hardly uh, face the reality they're all gathered on the first corner a nail-biting climax then moran on the inside collins on the outside who is going to get away from the tapes first it's collins from the outside just i think to the corner collins although moran made a terrific effort collins leads it now can moran again find that very very special piece of magic to work his way through collins in front and really going as though his life depends on it Feet. Now here comes Moran and Moran is closing ominously on Collins. Collins of course has been out of big time speedway for a year. This would crown a fantastic return. I think he's left a gap there and I think Moran might just be through. No, he's just held on. He must stay in close. Moran will try him down the inside. Lap after lap. This is lap three into the corner. Collins again has stretched away. He's drifting, 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 and Moran's almost in trouble on his back wheel there. It somehow managed to maintain control. The last 340 metres of what has been a tremendous afternoon speedway. And here comes Moran again for his last desperate effort. Around the outside, I think he's going to try and swing back. He does, and over the line, it is just Peter Collins. Oh, what a finish. Moran was on his back wheel. Collins had both wheels on the ground, but PC, Peter Collins, the old maestro of English Speedway, who only came into the team as an overnight replacement for his Bellevue teammate, Chris Morton, has delivered the goods for England, and that's an enormous psychological boost for them against the Americans. Oh, what a finish, and what a day for Peter Collins. Well, Peter Collins really uh, the hero of the afternoon. What do you, what, what are your immediate feelings after that race? Um, yeah, very happy to go out there with it all resting on me, and certainly to come and do well. I was dreading going out there and losing because suddenly all the pressure was on me. 
all the weight on my shoulders, but it worked out fine. But I'd just like to say it was a hell of a team effort. I mean, the thing is, without our lads going out there and putting us in that position of being level after we'd finished, um, gave me the opportunity because uh, without them doing that, I mean, I wouldn't have been out there in a runoff. And uh, I mean, they've all done just as much as I have. So, you know, I'm very pleased we've won. It's been a great result for us today. So that really sensational performance from Peter Collins giving England victory in the runoff and really sets things up for the next leg of this competition, the intercontinental final in Vo Yen in Denmark when England and the United States meet Sweden and Denmark. But for now, from Saddlebow Road, Kings Lynn, a very good night. And the result of tonight's final speedway test match at Poole between England and the USA was a victory for the USA, which means that they win the series by three matches to two. Programmes for Thursday evening here on Anglia. At 7 o'clock, survival tells the sad story of the near extinction of the beautiful...